the Lego is changing. It is fact. We have observed over the past almost 100 years of this toy's history, their constant evolution and the survival through multiple different hardships. And today, in 2021, they're currently working towards yet another evolutionary step. Welcome to the Here's Tea channel. My name is Tahir. And yes, we're talking today about Lego, the best toy in the world, and how their evolution and their work towards ever better state of the world around them became one of the reasons why I love the product so much and why I'm inspired when it comes to my personal projects or even my business day to day. Without further ado, let's do this. On this channel, I primarily talk about people, places, and tech. And if you're curious to learn more about other innovative products or products that are continuously evolving themselves and inspire me, well, after this video is done, check out this playlist or one of the cards at the end of the video. Lego is a fascinating brand for many different reasons. For me, I do have a long history with it. I used to play with Legos, I think, starting age like seven or so, and I still recall some of my sets, especially this OG original pirate set. I had this one of these figurines with a <laughs> wooden leg that everyone wanted me to trade for. But over time, for multiple different reasons, including the cost, the availability in the country where I grew up, as well as just in general, my areas of focus, I kind of like completely stopped buying Lego sets for quite a while. And it's interesting because during that time, that's when Lego almost went bankrupt a couple of times, when they were at the heavy losses, they had to lay off a bunch of people, they opened the Lego lands and they start losing a bunch of money on them as well. They struggle to maintain their products relevancy in the world where all the kids are all of a sudden playing video games and then fast forward like almost two decades I have kids and I decided to buy a couple of Lego sets for them and I was amazed back when I was a kid the most advanced sets were Lego Technic which were catered towards like 16 17 year olds and now I have a full collection <laughs> probably way more sets than I should personally in my age of Lego sets 18 plus that are perfectly catered to the adult audience. And that got me curious because as I read about their history, as I read about those struggles, how did that company that almost shut its doors and was completely lost in the world where video games start dominating the kids' attention became ever profitable? The largest toy manufacturer out there. The focus. First and foremost, what Lego did the right way is that they completely gained their focus back and they prioritized on a very limited set of products. Yes, it sounds weird when I say it's limited and you look at their store and there's seemingly like hundreds upon hundreds of different sets. But one of the interesting things you'll observe about them is they're all surrounding a certain set of themes. They really allowed themselves to go and explore the Star Wars universe, Lord of the Rings, Marvel, Harry Potter, all those other universes, but they always made sure those universes look authentic and they look real and they fit within the Lego world, the Lego universe. And that helped a ton because now you all of a sudden catch <laughs> those adults who used to be kids playing with those basic Lego City, Lego pirate sets. And now we generated new taste, we have new favorite franchises and oh wait a minute my favorite toy of that time now has my favorite franchises that i'm enjoying today i want to buy those sets maybe not to play but rather to have it as a collectible displayed on my shelf as a way to show my love for a particular franchise and also have that little nostalgic feeling embedded within it this was a beautiful move it showed their focus on the core product but at the same time it showed that they can still leverage other ideas, other great ideas, and bring them back to the core that is at the heart of the company. The new segments. This section builds perfectly on the prior one because once they found that core, they slowly built up and essentially tried to overstretch themselves and explore the segments that are closest to them. And well, who is closest to those kids who used to play with the sets? Either those kids who now are adults or their parents. They used to only max out at like Lego sets for like 16 year olds. And now all of a sudden they have a very mature lineups for 18 plus for real young adults and actual adults. And it's very much represented in their numbers as well. In one of the recent studies, they essentially reported that close to 20% of their revenue is generated not from the kids, but from the sales to the adults. And that section keeps growing. Their latest botanical collection perfectly exemplifies it. Is that no kid wants to play with a bonsai tree or the bouquet, 
but adults like myself who want to just relax, maybe in between the phone calls and Zoom calls in this world of pandemic where I just wanna break up my day a little bit and distract and focus on something completely different, as complex maybe as just flipping through the pages of the instruction and putting a couple of bricks together. Well, this became a throve for all those adults who are working from home, for all those adults who have those affiliation to different franchises who wanna just buy something, slowly take their time, pop in the podcast, the audiobook, assemble a few steps at a time, and then put it on the shelf and not necessarily play with it like a kid and do some role playing. This allowed them to open a completely new segment that they already announced that they're gonna continue building up towards and they'll essentially continue creating sets in the future, catered perfectly towards only the adults. The Beyond. Well, now that we established their strong understanding of their new different segments and their core, what it lies beyond for the Lego brand. This is a very curious stage because there are several different directions that I can see right now Lego's experimenting with. And one of the first ones that you will know and you can already observe today is the Lego Ideas. They realized how much their old school fans can help drive the future designs and the future generations of the new Lego products. So what do they do? They create a crowdsourcing platform where you can go and pitch your Lego set ideas. And for the ones that are most voted up, well, guess what? They can actually create them and all of a sudden you can see your own design with some, you know, <laughs> Legoism and adjustments by actual professional Lego designers, you will get your set on the shelves of the Lego stores. This is a fascinating exercise for me when it comes to the product company leveraging their fans to build future products. And I love it. I actually have quite a few sets that were first originally pitched on the Lego Ideas website. They started experimenting with a new media, but in a very new and a refreshing way. Yes, they tried in past to animate the Lego figures and essentially fit other worlds or fit Lego in the other worlds and not necessarily doing that much and that well with their license. But then the Lego movie came and everything. everything is awesome. <laughs> I had to do it, sorry, but <laughs> the amazing execution of the Lego movie really showed me that they have the right North Star ahead of them. If you think about in past, they would try just animate it and essentially it'll be the animated movie with Lego. Nothing as fascinating as actually making you feel like you're watching on the screen someone playing the Lego. From the smallest details that use and leverage Lego, other pieces like Lego explosions, Lego water, things of that nature, to the fact that they embedded the story of intergenerational change with the father Lego fan switching over to the son Lego fan or in the second movie from the son Lego fan over to the sister Lego fan and it probably was a spoiler alert. With that, you also now see them going into the video games, but also in a very similar way to the Lego ideas where they say, you know what, we're gonna give you the assets, we're gonna give you the tools, but you tell us what kind of game you want to create. And if this game is interesting enough and the community likes it, well, we're gonna make it official and we're gonna bring it to the rest of the world. Finally, the third example I wanted to bring to your attention is curious new exploratory ways of embedding Lego in other parts of our life. What I mean by this is, the IKEA partnership. Did you even know that they have an IKEA partnership? That was very under the radar move, but I loved it because that essentially your regular boxes that you would probably need anyway to put some small nicks and knacks or maybe some other Lego parts in it. But the fact that they created them embedded with all of those studs around and on top, almost like calling you to go and put and assemble something on it. And this box is exactly what I have on my desk when I'm at work so that if I have five minutes and I wanna completely switch my mind off and just focus on something different to just de-stress, what I do, I just pop it open. I usually have one of these sets that I bought disassembled there and I'm slowly assembling it and as I go through it and it takes me like probably a month to assemble one thing, but it's a lot of fun and it works naturally and natively within my day to day. So when I think about these kind of new ideas and new venture out, they're not going too far, they're not straying away from the core, yet you can tell that they really think about how they can continue helping their fans, long-term fans, engage with the brand without going too far, yet still showing them that there is that core, there's the still natural love to the Lego pieces, those studs, and they will retain it no matter what kind of product, whether it's a furniture, the movie, or some completely other new fascinating thing that they're gonna come up with this year, you will still find that core in the middle that reminds you that Lego still remembers why we love this brand in the first place. 
What kind of LEGO sets do you have in your household? If you do not have LEGO sets, like what are you waiting for? You should be already placing the order while you're watching this video. And if you're a fan of some other franchise, a TV show, maybe some interesting theme, which one do you want to see in the next LEGO set? We'll share your thoughts and ideas in the section below. In my professional life, I am what I would call a turnaround geek or someone who just likes fixing stuff and building stuff. So to me, there's a lot in this story about how you find that core, how you find that focus and how you're relentless in your execution and you continue driving the innovation, small incremental steps at a time. Their story is fascinating. Yes, I love the brand and clearly I love sometimes assembling some of these sets and like putting them on the shelf. And I'm confident they'll be successful as long as they keep that motto at the heart of the company. Their new motto, which relatively new, will sound very familiar to long-term viewers because I've been talking on these themes for ages now. And their motto is, only the best is good enough. I'll repeat, only the best is good enough. That's, to me, <laughs> that's like that strength, the core saying that we will continue driving to the perfection. We will stick to our core. We will introduce new ideas. But at the end of the day, we will always strive for that best Lego experience ever. And I hope you take it away as an inspiration for your personal projects, for your study projects, or maybe for your day-to-day -day office job. We all should strive to make sure the best is just good enough. Thank you very much, guys, for stopping by. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the like button. And I will see you next Saturday, 10 a.m. Eastern, on this very channel. For the outro, I actually wanted to use a few interesting three three interesting facts that I read. I had no place to put them in a script for the rest of the video, so I figured, hey, why not? It's gonna be the outro. So, one interesting fact is that Lego is the largest tire manufacturer in the world. Yeah, I know by the quantity, but it's hysterical, the fact that they produce the most tires in the world. Go figure. Number two, there are now over four billion, with a B, billion minifigures out there in the world. With that, and at that growth pace, I'm pretty sure we're gonna soon have one minifigure per each person. <laughs> Let's hope there will not be some Lego minifigure revolution. And they're still a family-owned business. They're now on the fourth generation in their family. And to me, that's amazing with the fact that they were able not only to retain the consistency in the product, but also in execution on the family side. Bravo, and clearly, I love the brand. I love the toys, the art pieces. I'm gonna continue assembling. I have a lot of work to do with all of these sets that I'm yet to open, and I promise myself I'm gonna stop buying them until I fully assemble what I have today. And yeah, <laughs> let's see how successful I'm be with that. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.